Everyone here is either a self-made millionaire or aspires to become one in the future. It's clear that the subject of wealth building resonates with all of us. Today, I'm excited to share seven keys to becoming an outstanding leader in this industry and achieving financial success. The best part is, these keys are not complicated. To become a millionaire, you need to undergo a significant transformation. You must develop character traits that surpass those of 99% of the population, including honesty, discipline, and the ability to cultivate quality relationships. Without these foundational qualities, success becomes elusive. First and foremost, let's talk about the importance of dreaming big. Every successful individual has cited a pivotal moment in their journey when they made the decision to pursue wealth. It's about recognizing that the path to success requires dedication, hard work, and sacrifice. This leads us to the first key, which is clarity. Clarity is paramount in both success and business. Having worked with countless corporations and businesses, I found that problems often arise when there's a lack of clarity about goals and strategies. That's why I've developed the two-day MBA program, which emphasizes the importance of clarity in all aspects of business operations. It's essential to clearly define your product, identify your target customers, and understand how you can differentiate yourself from competitors. The second key is to write it down. There's immense power in putting your goals on paper. Numerous studies have shown that individuals who write down their goals are more likely to achieve them. Writing engages multiple parts of your brain, turning your goals into tangible objectives that your subconscious mind can work on 24-7. Now let's talk about the third key, which is concentration. To achieve success, you must learn to focus single-mindedly on one task at a time. Avoid distractions and stay laser-focused on your goals. Moving on to the fourth key, constraints. Every journey toward success will have obstacles or constraints. The key is to identify and address these constraints systematically, allowing you to progress more efficiently towards your goals. The fifth key is continuous learning and development. Dedicate yourself to constant improvement and stay updated on the latest trends and developments in your industry. Warren Buffett famously spends hours every day reading, emphasizing the importance of lifelong learning. Next, we have commitment. Success requires unwavering dedication and perseverance. Make a firm commitment to your goals and be prepared to put in the necessary effort and time to achieve them. Finally, courage is essential. Have the courage to begin, take risks, and face failure. But also, have the courage to persist and keep pushing forward, even when the going gets tough. In conclusion, these seven keys, clarity, writing it down, concentration, constraints, continuous learning, commitment, and courage are essential pillars on your journey to becoming a successful leader in your industry and achieving financial prosperity. By embodying these principles, you can unlock your full potential and realize your dreams of wealth and success. That's incredible timing. I just jotted down that very goal during a meeting earlier today. And now this confirmation comes along, whether through a phone call, something in the mail, or even on TV. It's simply extraordinary. So let's delve into the steps to turning those dreams into reality. Step number one, decide what you want. It sounds simple, but it's crucial. Next, write it down. There's immense power in putting pen to paper. Then, set a deadline. Give yourself a time frame to work within, setting the stage for accomplishment. Step number four is all about making a comprehensive list. Jot down every possible action you can think of to achieve your goal. And don't hesitate to add to it as new ideas come to mind. Keep a notepad by your bedside for those midnight epiphanies. You'll thank yourself later. This step is monumental. It's like a massive ship changing course in the ocean. Your entire trajectory shifts when you lay out the steps you need to take. Speaking of valuable reads, one book that truly left an impression on me is The Checklist Manifesto. It's a captivating exploration of how checklists can transform your approach to any endeavor, whether it's building a business or simply managing your day-to-day -day tasks. Step 5 is all about organization. Take that list you've compiled and prioritize it. What needs to be tackled first? What can wait? As you gather more information, adjust your checklist accordingly. Flexibility is key. Step 6 is where the magic happens. Taking action. Dive into the most important task on your list and get started. It doesn't have to be a monumental leap. Sometimes even the smallest step forward can set big things in motion. And finally, step seven is about consistency. 
Make progress on your most important goal every single day. It's about building momentum, one small action at a time. Now here's a practical exercise for you to take home. Grab a clean sheet of paper and jot down 10 goals you'd like to accomplish in the next 12 months. Write them in the present tense, as if they've already happened. Then, pick the one goal that would have the greatest positive impact on your life if you achieved it within the next 24 hours. That's your top priority. Transfer that goal to a fresh sheet of paper and apply the seven steps we've discussed. Write it down, set a deadline, make a comprehensive list, organize it into a checklist, take action, and commit to making progress every day. Now on to the next C. Competence. You can only earn a significant income if you excel at what you do. Break down your work into essential skills and focus on honing them. Don't try to be a jack of all trades. Aim to be in the top 10% of your field in the skills that truly matter. The third C is concentration. Master the art of focusing single-mindedly on one task at a time. Clear goals, confidence in your abilities, and unwavering focus are the keys to unlocking your full potential. And let's not forget about constraints. Identify the one factor holding you back from achieving your goals, the limiting factor between where you are and where you want to. B. Address it head on and watch as barriers dissolve before you. Continuous learning and development round out the list. Dedicate yourself to ongoing improvement. Study your field religiously, like Warren Buffett devours books. It's the path to mastery. Commitment is next on the agenda. Success demands unwavering dedication. Make a solemn vow to yourself. You will succeed, no matter what it takes. And last but not least, courage. Find the courage to begin, to persist in the face of adversity, and to never, ever give up. Remember, you become what you think about, so reinforce your commitment with affirmations like, I never give up. By following these principles, deciding what you want, taking decisive action, and embodying the qualities of competence, concentration, commitment, and courage, there's no limit to what you can achieve. So go forth and conquer. Please have a seat. I'd like to share a little story often used in professional speaking when someone has experienced an accident, much like I did. I recently underwent a hip operation and now require a walker for mobility. Imagine yourself standing on stage, ready to address a group of people. Before you begin, you share an intriguing tidbit. In the book, The Joy of Sex, there's a major error on page 54. Now, as I stand before you today, I can't help but express my happiness to be here. I've been informed that you are the leaders, the movers and shakers, the drivers of this company. And indeed it's true. But there's something more remarkable that you may not know. Each and every one of you is either a self-made millionaire, or has the intention to become one in the future. Isn't that correct? This company is a millionaire maker company. Life Vantage is here to provide you with the tools, one after another, akin to teaching you to cook in a kitchen, offering the necessary recipes to attain wealth. The only limitation on what you can achieve is determined by you. My journey into this subject began many years ago when I was starting as a speaker. I received a call from a gentleman who oversaw 800 divisions in his business across North America, all converging for an annual convention. He had surveyed them, and they all expressed a desire to learn how to become millionaires. He reached out to me and asked if I could deliver a talk on the subject. Naturally, as a budding speaker, I replied, of course, regardless of my actual knowledge on the topic. After hanging up the phone, reality set in. I was around 37 or 38 at the time, and realized I didn't know much about becoming a millionaire. Since my teenage years, my dream had been to achieve this milestone. However, despite being successful in sales and marketing, I was still far from reaching that goal. Now, I was faced with the challenge of speaking to 800 business owners like yourself on the subject. So for the next two months I immersed myself in research. It was a full court press. I devoured every piece of literature I could find on self-made millionaires. Through my research, I discovered that more than 10,000 self-made millionaires had been interviewed in detail. These are individuals who began with nothing and achieved millionaire status over the course of their working lifetimes. They shared their experiences, actions and even mistakes, though some claimed they made none. I compiled their insights into a talk titled the 21 Success Secrets of Self-Made Millionaires. When I delivered it, the response was immediate. A standing ovation. Requests poured in for repeats. 
and thus began my journey of delivering the talk worldwide, adapting it from a 60-minute session to full-day seminars. Eventually, I recorded it in audio and video formats, and also penned it into a book. Countless individuals around the globe found success through these teachings. It's akin to working with a master chef who can guide you in creating exquisite dishes. Similarly, learning from self-made millionaires can pave the way to financial prosperity. When I started studying this subject in 1980, there were approximately 5,000 self-made millionaires in America. Today, that number exceeds 30,000, with one new addition approximately every eight minutes. Remarkably, 87% of these millionaires are self-made, hailing from various industries. Statistics suggest that out of 100 individuals graduating from high school or college, only one will attain wealth in their lifetime, while three will achieve financial stability, and 15 will accumulate a substantial nest egg. Tragically, 80% will find themselves financially strained or destitute by retirement. Reflecting on my own journey, I didn't graduate high school with honors. In fact, I barely made it through. But that didn't define my future. Starting with menial jobs like washing dishes for $1.12 an hour, I gradually progressed. Each job loss felt like a setback, but I embraced them as opportunities for unexpected career shifts. I even experienced bouts of homelessness. However, deep down, I harbored a persistent belief that I would one day achieve wealth. This conviction only solidified when I delved into the study of wealth creation. I discovered fundamental principles, simple yet profound, accessible to anyone. A dependable source of cash flow is crucial, and entrepreneurship provides an excellent avenue for it. It's akin to tapping into a wellspring. Once you start, the flow of wealth becomes steady and abundant. That's the essence of success, persistence, learning, and seizing opportunities, which is to help you fill a well by pumping the room with the pump and to have the cash flow. Then the question is, what do you do with the cash flow? That's a whole other thing, so I'm not going to talk to you about that. But what I found was that there were 21 secrets, so I recorded these and gave them as talks, and so on. Everybody loves the subject of becoming wealthy, and people started to come back to me after as little as a year saying, because of your talk, I'm wealthy now, I'm a millionaire now. They would come back, their faces shining, and sometimes with tears in their eyes, as they struggled and struggled and struggled. One year after I listened to your talk and began to practice those things, I became wealthy. Here are a couple of ideas, and then I'm going to give you seven keys to becoming an outstanding leader in this industry, becoming one of the highest paid people in our society, and becoming wealthy. And the wonderful thing is, they're not complicated. I'm not asking you to learn rocket science or anything. All you have to do is do simple things. What they found in the first major studies of thousands of self-made millionaires is that they all said something similar. All the self-made, by the way. We now have 2,595 billionaires in the world today, and we didn't have billionaires when I started off studying. Maybe we had J. Paul Getty, the oil billionaire, but there weren't very many billionaires. Now there are 2,580. Some of them, according to Forbes, are self-made. These are people who started with nothing. Many of them were immigrants. They came to this country with nothing, and they started working and they started doing certain things in a certain way, which we'll talk about, and they became, first of all, millionaires. Here's a one-liner for you, because many of you are already millionaires. The first million is hard, but the second million is inevitable. And when I learned that, and of course the reason for that is, as Jim Rohn used to say, he said, it's not becoming a millionaire that's important. It's the person that you must become to become a millionaire. Yeah, you have to become a completely different person. You have to develop character beyond 99% of the people in the world. You have to develop honesty, discipline, quality relationships, the willingness and the ability to work, set priorities, and all kinds of stuff. Because without that, nothing is possible. So once you've earned your first million, then you've got, you are the person who could earn a lot of money, and the second million is not, it's never easy. Never easy, but it's easier. The first million is really hard. The second million, not so much. So I found that there were 21 secrets. The first one of all is to dream big dreams. I couldn't believe it. Every single person who finally made it. The turning point in their life was described as driving down the road of life not making much progress, which aligns with the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of the people make 80% of the money. At a certain point, they decided to change and go down a different road. The turning point is to make a decision. 
a decision to become wealthy, to become a millionaire. This decision involves committing to work hard, long hours, making sacrifices, and doing everything necessary to achieve success. This organization's primary focus is to help individuals become wealthy, enabling them to do all the wonderful things they want for themselves and their families. So make a decision that, by gum, you're going to do it. I realized at the age of 36 that I had wished, hoped, and prayed, but I never made a definitive decision. I thought, maybe someday it would happen. Maybe there'd be a miracle. So I bought penny stocks or mining stocks and tried all kinds of things, but not a darn thing happened. Then I found that the two things millionaires often say are, first, they were not more talented or smarter, nor did they get better grades than others. They were simply willing to work harder than anyone else. Self-made millionaires on average work about 59 hours a week, about 6 days a week at 10 hours a day, or 5 days a week at 12 hours. There are very few wealthy people who work just 5 days a week, and if they do, it's usually after they've achieved their financial goals. The second thing they found is that they were frugal. They earned the money but didn't spend it all. They saved. Because there's a time in life to be generous, to buy things, take trips, get new cars, new homes, and even a home in the mountains, but not too early. I once had a banker who was very helpful to me, Ellen, who said that they do banking for owners of small to medium-sized businesses and can always tell when a I business is going to get into trouble. It's when the owner decides to take all this money and build a new house. You can always tell because it's too soon. They spend their money too soon. If they waited another five years, they could have built a house without a problem. But what happens is they start to see some progress and go a little wild. Your job is to become a self-made millionaire, and Life End's job is to help you get there. My job is to tell you what to do. I'm going to show you the recipes and the form that you can use, and sometimes it just takes one choice. Remember, 87% of millionaires and billionaires are self-made. They started with nothing, and nobody's smarter than you, nobody's better than you. If somebody else can do it, especially with all the disadvantages that many people start with, you can do it too. That's the proof. Abraham Lincoln once said that some becoming wealthy is proof that all can become wealthy. It's just the very fact that a person does well starting with nothing and becoming wealthy. Well, there's the proof. You could do it as well. Just do the same things over and over again. So I wanted to share with you what I call the seven C's, and I began putting together formulas. And my formulas are three sevens, tens, twelves, and twenty ones. I wrote 22 books which had 21 great ideas to achieve this particular goal, 21 great ideas to double your income, 21 great ideas to live to be 100, 21 great ideas to be an outstanding manager, 21 great ideas to meet and marry the man or woman of your dreams, that's very popular, and I just did hundreds and hundreds of hours of research and wrote down all these one-liners, and people said, just one-liners, one word out of 21, changed their lives forever. So I'm very, very hungry. I've spent about 150,000 hours studying. I study all the time. Yesterday, on my way up here from Las Vegas, my son lives in Las Vegas. I probably read three and one half hours, plus two hours before leaving, and I'll do another four hours of reading today before I... just constantly taking in information. Because one idea, combined with your other ideas, and with your opportunity here, can transform your life forever. And you just have to say, is this the idea? Is this the idea? The first C is the C of clarity. Clarity is my favorite word for success. It's my favorite word in business. I have done consulting for more than a thousand corporations, large companies worldwide, companies like IBM, General Motors, PepsiCo, and Bank of America. I mean big companies. And I've also worked with more than 10,000 small and medium-sized companies. What I found is, in every single situation, Problems occur when the company becomes unclear about what it is they're doing, or how they're doing it. So I've developed a program that is just a fun program for me intellectually. It's called the Two-Day MBA, and it shows 10 different factors of a company, and these are the ones that I learned when I went to university back in my 30s. I find that all problems come from a lack of clarity. What is your product? It's the first question you ask. Who is your customer? What is your customer considered to be more valuable than anything else? How are you superior to your competitors? What can you do to attract more customers? How can you close those customers? I'll come to this in a second, but basically, it's clarity or lack of clarity. Now here's something else I learned. They did a study of 50 owners of companies, 
successful owners of companies like yourselves, and they asked them, what is the very best time management or business tool that you've ever discovered? 49 out of the 50 held up a bright yellow writing pad, sort of like this. This is what they did. This is how they planned their day. They made a list to do this today. That is, they wrote down everything they had to do. They always worked from a list. Always work from a list. Always work from a list. If you don't work from a list, it's very much like taking your hands off the wheel of your car going down a winding road in the mountains. What happens is, your life's going to go up, and you're instantly going to start doing irrelevant and unimportant and useless things, and at the end of the day, you'll be exhausted, and you'll have accomplished nothing. Now I know this doesn't apply to anybody here, but it does happen. So therefore, clarity is really important. We say in life that in life, you have turning points. And I have written and published 86 books now, because I deal with the formula for writing and publishing books. I have contracts for four more books, and I have two more books on top of the contracts I haven't had time to get to, because my legs have sort of distracted me for a while. But I have book after book. Most authors, professional authors, write one book every two or three years, and I write and publish as many as four books a year. Every 90 days, I write a book and I publish it. And then I'm now published, I'm happy to say, by the biggest publishers and the best publishers in the world. And people say, I'm going to write a book and become rich. So you don't write a book and become rich. You write several books and you become well off. Because one book will get people's attention. Two books will prove that the first one wasn't a fluke. Three will very often be the book that earns you some money. And then four and five and six. So people say, well, how can you write so many books? And I said, well, I have a system. I use a system like a recipe in the kitchen. I follow the recipe, and the system requires clarity. What is the book about? Who is the book for? What are the subjects in the book that are not covered somewhere else? What is the system, methodology, and process? I don't write fiction books. I only write non-fiction, which is do this and get this result. And then I will do hundreds of hours and hundreds of hours. So anyway, going back to my two-day MBA, what I found was that the number one reason why businesses are not successful, we're not talking about Fortune 500 companies, we're talking about one-person companies. The reason they're just not clear about their business, not clear about every step of the business, is because they don't think on paper. Thinking on paper is the most powerful tool in the world. It's you, a pen, and a piece of paper. This is the greatest wealth creator in the world. So, never never pick up the phone or answer the phone without something to write down. Make notes all the time. Make notes, make notes. Now you can capture all your notes on your phone, but what I found is that if you write it down, it records into your brain, and your chances are you'll remember. I found that if your goals are not in writing, one of the things I've taught, and I've taught more than 5 million people, is to write your goals down on paper. Write them down in the present tense, as though you had already achieved them. I will earn X number of dollars in 2019. I am a self-made millionaire by January 1st, 2025. I weigh X number of pounds. I live in a 5,000-foot house with a separate bedroom for each one of my children. In other words, write it down as though it were already a fact, and you're just reporting it. Your subconscious mind is marvelous, but what it does is it only thrives on goals that you pronounce in the now, in the present tense. So, you now have a dynamism. I think of the word, but this is the dynamism in your brain, where your brain knows that you're only earning this amount of money, but now you're saying, but I earn this amount of money. Your brain knows that you're not a millionaire, but now you're saying, I am a millionaire. And so, your brain goes to work to close this gap between where you are and where you want to be, and your brain starts to work 24 hours a day. It works and gives you ideas. Each person here has what is called the superconscious mind. This mind has been talked about for 5,000 years. Some call it the Oversoul, some call it the God Mind, some call it God Spirit, whatever it happens to be. But there's this incredible power in the universe that you can tap into. You can just reach it by simply writing down a goal clearly on a piece of paper. Then, this mind goes to work 24 hours a day to bring it into your life. You all read the books about the Law of Attraction and so on. Well, the fact is that once you're clear on a goal and you write it down, not type it, but write it down, you force this energy field of attraction. It starts to pull into your life everything that you need to make the goal clear. But if it's not in writing, not a darn thing happens. So, I'm going to ask you, sometimes I ask people, please, 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 just do one thing.
Write down your goals after this seminar. Follow the instructions that we'll give you. An instruction, and by the way, we made my goal setting formula available online for everybody here. So, everybody can go online to Life Advantage and get it, because it will save you 10 to 20 years of hard work. Your life will transform. It's almost like taking some magic elixir. Your whole life will be different. So anyway, what you do is, as I said, in life, every person has a turning point. The turning point comes when you set a major goal. When you decide upon a major goal. And since you're going to be working for money in business all your life, you might as well set a goal to earn a lot of money. You see, in life, you can earn a lot, or you can earn a little. And if you have a choice, I recommend that you choose a lot, okay? Because if you don't choose a lot, by default, you automatically get a little. And this 80% of the population out there is wandering around and complaining about successful people, oh no, life's not fair, and so on. No, because once you're clear about your goal, you start to see all kinds of opportunities, think of things that you can do that you hadn't thought of doing, then, move you faster toward the goal and move the goal toward you. You activate this field of magnetism, and you start to attract into your life people and circumstances who help you to achieve the goal, and you help to achieve their goals. I mean, it's the most amazing thing. And it is true and has been true for thousands of years, and it is the great secret of success. So, let us talk about the five and seven C's. And I could spend all day on these. It's number one, clarity. It's being absolutely clear who you are, which means what you want in life, what kind of a person you are, what you believe in, what's important to you, and what you care about. You'll never be successful unless you're doing something that you enjoy and doing it well. Napoleon Hill, through his contribution, under the table in 1936, said, Do something that you love and do it well, and you'll never work another day for the rest of your life. You just never work again because you could hardly wait to get to work. You could hardly wait to do it because you love it. A turning point in my life, and I'm trying to give you a lot of stuff in the time we have. A turning point in my life took place in about 1987, and I attended a seminar. The speaker at the seminar talked about the importance of self-esteem. And what he said is, your self-esteem is defined as how much you like yourself. The more and the more you like yourself, the more you like other people. And the more you like yourself, the more confidence you have, and the more willing you are to try different things. And the more like yourself, the less afraid you are of making mistakes. So you're willing to take chances with the possibility that you won't be successful. The more you like yourself. And the way that you build up your self-esteem, the more you simply say, I like myself. I love myself. I like myself. Say it. I like myself. No, 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 don't suck your thumb and say, yeah. I like myself. Wonderful. And the most powerful thing that you can do in this business is to help other people like themselves. And how do you help other people like themselves? You treat them well. You practice the golden rule. You treat them the way you would like others to treat you. And so, they feel valuable and important, and they want to be around you, and they want to accept your guidance, and they want to do what you instruct them to do, and they want to become successful as well. And so, the more you like yourself, the more you like others. And the more you like others, the more they like you right back. And it becomes a positive upward spiral that makes you happy. The wonderful thing about Utah and the religious proclivities, if you like, which I admire so much, is the focus on the family and the focus on children. The greatest thing that you can do for your children is to raise them so they're self-confident and have high self-esteem, so they like themselves, value themselves, and consider themselves to be worthwhile people naturally. And that's the most important thing in the world. I have been so blessed. I had the most wonderful wife. The 40th anniversary is 40 years in June, and Rita, by the way, just came up here to get a check and flowers. She prefers the check to the flowers. He told me that she's just celebrating her 40th anniversary. Isn't that great? 40th anniversary, it's great. So, we have four wonderful children. And we have never criticized our children or punished our children in their entire lives. We've had a lot of heart-to-heart -heart talks, but we've never punished them and never criticized them. We've never done anything to take away their self-esteem and self-confidence. We've always told them what wonderful children they are. And now, three of the four are married. We have seven grandchildren. And they say, Mike, Mike, Mike. Charlie Jones used to say, we have seven grandchildren, all males, except for six. No, I have one grandson, six granddaughters, 
and so on. But that's the most wonderful thing in the world. And what I see is my children grew up and they married people with high self-esteem who treat them as though they are valuable and important people, and vice versa. And then they raised their children with high self-esteem. And now, you know how you can tell if you have a good relationship at any level of business anywhere? If you laugh a lot. People in a good relationship laugh all the time. Thank you, sir. But it's so true. Because you can only laugh spontaneously. You cannot decide to laugh or plan to laugh or decide how long you're going to laugh. It can only happen spontaneously. It has to come from your heart. It has to come from your mind. So, the very best relationships with other people just laugh all the time. And so, you go into my home, and especially when my kids were growing up. If my kids just laugh all the time, and the friends started to come over to our house all the time because in our house, everybody laughs, and the kids are happy. Getting off track, number one is clarity. So, here are the seven keys to setting and achieving goals. These seven keys will make you rich. Key number one is to decide exactly what you want. Decide exactly what you want. The great majority of people don't know what they want. They want to be rich. But what does that mean? How much is that? When? What will you do to get it? So, decide exactly what you want. If you're married, sit down with your spouse and decide exactly what you two, people working together, a husband and wife working together on a single goal, multiply the power behind achieving that goal more than anything else. It's called the great mastermind, the husband-wife working together. Anyway, number one is to decide exactly what you want. Einstein said that if you cannot tell your goal to a six-year-old child, and have the six-year-old explain it to another six-year-old child, and both of them understand it, then you don't know what your goal is. So, ask yourself, is your goal so clear that you could tell it to a six-year-old child, and the six-year-old child would not only understand what the goal is, but could tell you how close you are to it? Great test. It's a great test, the Einstein test. Number two is to write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. There's nothing more important than writing down your goals. Because if it's not written down, it's merely a fantasy. Now they've done a whole series of studies at Harvard and Yale and Cornell and so on about the difference between students who type their notes and students who write their notes. The students who write their notes all get straight A's. The students who type their notes forget everything before the end of the day. Because writing forces you to use three abilities. Your kinesthetic ability, your physical ability of writing, and your auditory ability. You see it when you're writing, and your auditory ability, you say it to yourself. So, you activate the three major parts of your brain simultaneously, like a laser beam from a space station onto a piece of paper, and your subconscious mind accepts it as a command. It accepts it as a command, and your superconscious mind starts to work on it 24 hours a day. Just write it down. Write it down. And it's the most amazing darn thing. If all you did was write down one goal and leave this conference, your life would be different forever. And because there are all kinds of things will start to happen, and you'll say, well that's a coincidence. I just wrote that goal down when I was in that meeting this afternoon, and then I got this phone call or something in the mail, or I saw something on TV. So just, it's just phenomenal. Step number one, decide what you want. Step number two, write it down. Step number three, set a deadline. Tell your subconscious when you want it. I want this to be such a day. So every goal always ends with a use by date. And as I achieve this goal by this date, you write it in the present tense. Number three is to make a list. I'm sorry. Number four, step number four, is making a list of everything that you can think of to do. Just make a list. And as you think of more things, add it to the list. Keep writing it down, writing it down. And sometimes, just think of something in the middle of the night, write it down. Keep a pad of paper next to your bed, and quickly write it down so you don't forget it. Just write it down, write it down. That's number four. And this is important. It's the great turning point. Like a massive ship turning in the ocean. Your whole life starts to turn when you write down a list of the steps you're going to have to take. I don't recommend other people's books because I've written so many of my own, and I've summarized hundreds of books I've read over the years. However, there's one book that had a profound influence on me, and it's called The Checklist Manifesto. Has anyone read this book? The Checklist Manifesto was written by an emergency ward doctor who emphasizes the importance of checklists in achieving goals, whether it's building a business, raising a child, or any other endeavor. 
He argues that every successful endeavor, whether it's constructing a building or a swimming pool, relies on a checklist. Organizing a checklist before starting a project can have an extraordinary impact on one's life. The author illustrates, in an engaging manner, how those who neglect checklists often face dire consequences, such as bankruptcy or failure. Conversely, he highlights how successful individuals in finance and business utilize checklists to streamline their operations. This short yet fascinating book advocates for organizing goals into a prioritized list and creating a corresponding checklist. It emphasizes taking action promptly, starting with the most important tasks. Whether it's revising papers, making phone calls, or placing orders, the key is to initiate action. Lastly, the author suggests committing to daily actions toward the most important goal. Consistency is crucial for progress and success. I'm going to provide you with an exercise to take home and complete. By the way, going forward, whenever you onboard a new person, make sure to have them go through this exercise. If they don't, don't waste any time with them, because they likely won't be successful without following your guidance. Here's the exercise. Start with a clean sheet of paper and write down today's date. Then, list 10 goals you'd like to achieve in the next 12 months. Don't worry about goals for 2 years, 5 years, or 10 years. Just focus on the next 12 months. Write these goals in the present tense, as if you're placing an order. For example, I earn, I achieve, I weigh, I drive, I own, and so forth. These goals can encompass various aspects of your life, including financial, family, and physical goals. So, write down 10 goals. Then, take this list of 10 and ask yourself, if I had a magic wand and could achieve any one goal on my list within 24 hours, which one goal would have the greatest positive impact on my life? Usually this goal will jump out at you, like a spider in a horror movie. It'll grab your attention, and you'll instinctively circle it. Transfer this circled goal to a clean sheet of paper. Then, follow these seven steps. Write it down. Set a deadline. Make a list of everything you have to do to accomplish it. Organize the list into a checklist. Take action. Do something every day. Repeat. By doing this simple exercise, you'll set yourself up for success. Remember, nothing can stop you but yourself. Now let's talk about the second C, the C of competence. It's simple. You can only earn a lot of money if you're very good at what you do. Break down your work into skills. Identify the most important skills needed for success. Recruiting, training, managing, motivating, leading, and supervising. Consider the skills required to be in the top 10% of your field. You don't have to be in the top 1%, just aim for the top 10%. There are no successful people who are not good at what they do. They excel because they devote significant time and effort to their craft. Whether you're in sports, music, chess, or any other field, there's a wonderful study that's been written up. It's called, It'll Come to Me in a Second. Sometimes, because of these pains, my memory slips, and it goes around in a circle like a merry-go-round, but then it comes back to me. Essentially, what it said was that studying the most successful people reveals that they spend four or more hours becoming better at what they do than average people. The others don't do it, and everybody has natural abilities, but the ones who use those abilities transform themselves by really working hard at becoming good, one skill at a time. This is another really important thing. Don't try to be good at everything, because what happens is you just break down, you're overwhelmed, and you give up. You say, I tried that before. I had an experience which I'll pass on to you. When I was a young man in my 20s, I was in sales. I was cold calling, knocking on doors every day, and making one or two sales a week. I was living in a little rooming house with a bed on the floor and a little bathroom, and I was struggling. I could tell you within a dollar how much money I had because it was less than a dollar. I worked from 5 or 6 or in the morning, waiting at 8 mod a.m. when people came to work. I knocked on office doors and business doors all day long. In the evenings I knocked on homes and apartments, making call after call after call. I made hundreds of calls, and with no sales the first year, I made more than 20,000 calls, and only made a few sales, just enough to survive. Then one day, I asked a question. Of all the skills, what's holding me back more than anything else? The answer was closing the sale. I couldn't get people to make a decision. I was enthusiastic and positive, and people were interested and friendly, but at the end of the conversation, 
they would say those awful words, let me think it over. I was getting this all the time. So, I made a decision. I still remember the time, date, and place, sitting in my little rooming house when I decided to learn how to become very good at closing sales. I began to read everything I could find, study the psychology, techniques, and methods of closing sales. In one year, my income went up ten times, changing my life forever. Years later, I didn't know how to do it, but then I did. Because all skills are learnable, and you can learn any skill that you want to learn, if you simply find out what others have done before you and practice it. I began to recruit other salespeople and teach them the same thing. I said, here's the product, here's the advantages and benefits for our customers, and here's how to ask them to make a decision. They became successful. Many of them today are millionaires and multi-millionaires. Many of them own multiple businesses, and they've told me, your training when I was in my 20s, going nowhere, broke, changed my life forever. The most important thing was I got people just to make a decision. I asked them to make a decision. So many people in this room I know have a challenge with closing. We all do when we start, but that's where you are now. That's not where we're going to be three months from now. Three months from now, you're going to be so dangerous. You will need to be restrained for yourself and the safety of society because you'll be able to close anybody or anything. And I am not talking about pressure. Do you know what good business is? It's helping. It's what you are. You are great helpers. You are helping people to improve the quality of their lives, their health, and their family. So when you start to see yourself as a helper, your job is to help people understand how much better off their lives can be if they take your advice and guidance. That's what you do. Earl Nightingale said something many years ago. He said, you don't get what you want in life. You get what you deserve. So I began to study that. And deserve comes from the Latin words de, which means from, and service, which means service. So you get what you want in life from service, service to other people. And so, the people who serve the most people, the very best, the ones who make the most amount of money in the shortest period of time. Do so because when you help other people improve the quality of their life, your self-esteem goes up, your self-confidence goes up, and you feel happy. It's the most amazing thing. You just put your life on this wonderful upward spiral by deserving. That people will buy from you by looking for ways to help them. How can I help this person improve the quality of their life, their family, and their work? So, see yourself as a helper, and your job is to deserve more, and you'll find when you look at Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, and other multimillionaires, you think these people were focused. They had this obsession with a product of some kind that would really help people improve the quality of their lives. That's all they thought about, all they talked about. And the only people who succeed in those companies are those who have the same obsession with customer service. Tom Peters, in his book In Search of Excellence many years ago, said the most important principle of all was the obsession with customer service. The most successful and highest paid people just think of us serving people and helping people improve their lives all the time. So that's the most important level of confidence that you want to achieve. First of all you have clear goals. Then you ask yourself, what is it that I really really love to do that really helps other people improve the quality of their life? And how can I become really really good at doing that more and more of the time? The third S is the C of concentration. And these are not necessarily in order but in a way these are. The C of concentration is your ability to focus, which we talked about before. It's your ability to focus single-mindedly on one thing at a time, and to work on that one task until it's complete. And to discipline yourself not to do anything else or to become distracted by emails, bells, bits, noises, and things like that. It's just the ability to focus like a laser beam on a single task. I wrote a book a few years ago and it was called Double Your Income and Double Your Time Off. I sent it to a publisher, and the publisher said, Ah, you know, a book's title is really, really important. He said, Well, it's an interesting title, but it's kind of bland. And one of the titles, Chapter 15, There's 21 Great Ways to Stop Procrastinating and Get More Things Done Faster. And one of the chapters was called, Eat That Frog. And Eat That Frog came from a story by Mark Twain where he said, If the first thing you do when you get up in the morning is you eat a live frog, you'll have the pleasure of knowing that's probably the worst thing that's going to happen to you all day long. And Mark Twain was just an incredibly good humorist. And he said, and there's two corollaries to that. Rule number one is if you have to eat a frog at all, it does not pay to sit and look at it for very long. You know, get on with it.
get it over. He said, and the second corollary is if you have two frogs to eat, eat the ugliest one first. A good friend of mine from here in Salt Lake actually, an insult, says that the key to success is to do the worst first, eat the ugliest frog first, and I really like that. So, your job is to eat that frog. So, my publisher came back to me, and he said, if you could take this title and make it the title of the book and then run the theme of eating a frog, getting prepared, getting ready, picking the most important things first all the way through, we could publish it as a book, and it might sell a few copies. Today it's past 10 million copies in 46 languages. It's the best-selling book on time management in the world. I've had countless people come to me from all over the world because it's available in so many languages, and they say, this book made me rich. This book made our company the number one company in Europe, the number one company in the country. It made us rich. They said, the people who made me double, triple, quadruple my income. People who have transformed their lives by this simple concept. And the concept is, once you have determined the most valuable and important thing you can do, start with that first, and do only that task until it's complete. Now the first time you try to do this, you will find it's quite difficult. Napoleon Hill did a subsequent book to his book, Thinking Grow Rich. It was called, The Master Key to Riches, and after 260 pages, it gives you the answer, The Master Key to Riches. In the first paragraph he explains, In this book, you will learn the master key to success. So, it's a whole book on motivational ideas and principles. And the last line of the last chapter of the last page is, Now you know the master key to riches is self-discipline. And what we have found is that the most successful people have come to that conclusion as well, is that self-discipline is the master key to success. So, for you to write down your goals, make a plan, set priorities, and start with your most important task, it takes tremendous self-discipline. If you haven't done it up to now, it's so hard. But God said, everything is hard before it's easy. And everything at the beginning is difficult, but later it becomes easy and automatic. You have to force yourself to discipline yourself at the beginning. After that, it becomes easier and easier, and you actually feel happy. Now here's the most wonderful thing. When you discipline yourself to start and complete a task, or a part of a task, you feel like an athlete. So here's my question. If an athlete runs in a race and comes in first, what do they call this person? The winner. Exactly. I've studied this hundreds, thousands of hours. What it says is that when you win, when you come in as the winner, your body releases endorphins, which are called nature's happy drug. They make you happy. And dopamine, which is a form of energy that you get from a positive experience. So when you complete a task, your body releases these drugs, and you feel happy. So they call it a natural happy drug. If you want to be happy, just start and complete a task, and you get a zip. Wow, wow. I feel happy. So I organize my life, to organize my task that it's at, and then my wife Barbara will come in and say, I'm going to have dinner in 10 minutes. I say, okay, 10 minutes. Let's see what have I got here that will take 10 minutes. Huh? I can do this in 10 minutes. So always end my day with a completed task. This is a really simple thing, and I've done it. I could take it off, complete, I'm done, and I'm happy, and I'll walk out, and then I'm smiling. When you make a person feel like a winner, you feel happy. When you discipline yourself to complete a task, you give yourself a buzz. Alfred Adler, one of the top psychologists of history, called this a positive addiction. He said if you start and complete a task, you get a buzz, and the buzz becomes addictive. You start thinking, no. I want that buzz again. But the buzz is a positive addiction, and it makes you happy when you do it. So every time you start and complete a task, you feel like a winner. I mean, you feel like a winner. You want to do it again and have that winning feeling. If you want to raise happy, healthy, self-confident children, one of my programs, 21 Great Ways to Raise Happy, Healthy, Self-Confident Children, one of my 21s is what you do is you make your children feel like winners all the time. If you're happily married, Make sure that your spouse feels like a winner all the time. How do they feel like a winner? It's when you praise them or compliment them, thank them for what they did, acknowledge their success, whatever it happens to be. Make them feel like a winner. Because every single time you start and complete something and it's acknowledged first, it feels like a winner. You know that the greatest speed records, Olympic records, are always broken in front of the biggest crowds? 
Interesting point. The biggest crowds, you get 10,000 people, you get a record. You get 50,000 people, wow. 100,000 people, they break all the world records, because the greater the amount of praise and that you get from winning a race or potentially rich, the faster people run. Interesting thought. So, those are the first three. Clarity. Absolutely clear about your goals and what you need to do to achieve them. Competence. Become very good at your task. And number three is concentration. Concentrate single-mindedly on your most important tasks and stay with it until it's complete. By the way, I could speak for two days just on concentration, and I have tried these principles all over the world. But that's all that you need. Start and finish your most important tasks. Number four is constraints. Now constraints are a concept that was developed in Tel Aviv by a management consultant many years ago. And it says that between where you are today and where you want to be sometime in the future, there is always one constraint or choke point that determines the speed at which you get from here to there. That's the constraint. So the art of life is to identify the constraints that are holding you back from achieving the goal that you want to. And it could be something simple, like finding a parking space. It could be something simple, like getting your shopping done and so on. Continually ask, what is the constraint or limiting factor? What they call the limiting factor between here and where you want to go. So you say to yourself, all right, you want to achieve a particular goal. So you ask yourself, what is the one factor that determines the speed at which you achieve that goal? What is the one factor that determines the speed at which you achieve your most important goal? And you work with your downline, you work with your consultants, you work with other people, and you help them to be absolutely clear. And don't try to change the world. Try to change one thing, one factor. Try to alleviate that one factor, and that'll change your whole life. It's unbelievable. So you say, all right, let's talk about selling. Like a speaker about selling them for days and days as well. Let's talk about selling. Well, we want to earn more money. Do we want to earn more money? Say yes. Would you like to double your income effectively this next week? I have a seminar that I do. By the way, it's 21 ways to double your income in the next seven days. And it's all based on hundreds of hours of research and blah blah. But I'll give you just one. I was thinking I could spend the whole day on the seven. But I'll give you just one. What determines your income today? What's the constraint? What's the factor? Well, the limiting factor is the number of people who you sign up to join the business. It's pretty much it. It could be something different, but less. Or it could be closing the sale, is getting that person to come on board and become active and get busy and start talking to other people and both using and selling the product. Figure out what it is. But let's just say that it is the number of people that you talk to on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And I give this little formula when I'm talking to sales audiences, and in reality, we're all in sales. And I say, the average person in America who earns a full-time living from sales, and sales is on their business card, about 17% of the population, spends about 90 minutes a day talking to new potential customers. 90 minutes a day, and this goes back to 1928 all the way forward. 90 minutes a day. Well, there's 8 hours in a working day. So that means the person is spending one-fifth of each working day talking to new potential customers. So if you want to double your income, it's very simple to do, and you all know what the answer right now is. Spend 180 minutes each day talking to new people. Now you can't control or determine which one of them is going to buy or join or something else. But you know that if you speak to enough people, enough people will join or buy or become customers or become distributors and so on. So therefore, just double the number of minutes. I call this Brian's Minutes Theory. Double the number of minutes from 90 minutes to 180 minutes. Or if you're working whatever number of minutes today, and you could calculate that, track it for a week, every day, track how many minutes you're spending talking to new people about this business, then double the number of minutes. See, now you can't double the number of minutes overnight. It may take you a week or two weeks. But my promise to you is that if you double the minutes or double your income, if you double the minutes you spend face to face, head to head, I hear type love say, knee to knee, heart to heart. If you double the ministry, double your income. And I've had countless people come to me, and it's interesting. They come up at the seminar. There's a bunch of BS. I've been in my business for years. This competition is so tough. You can't double your income. Just and then I come back 6 or 12 months later. And they come up to me, and they said, Do you remember me? And I don't. But they say, 
I told you it was a bunch of BS about doubling your FaceTime and doubling your income. The week after I went out, I said, I'm going to prove that person's wrong. I'm going to prove that he's just a dork or something else. And he said, the following week, I doubled my income after eight years in my field. They doubled my accident. He said, I couldn't believe it. He said, I told my only friend. I told my other friends how I did it. They're the top salesmen in the company. I told them, I think someone else to do it, and everybody who did it, doubled their income. And then, if you don't let you double your income, what do you do is that you double the amount of time you're spending, and you spend it on with better people. Okay, now I'm running out of time, so I'm going to give you the other principles that we have. The number five, number four, is constraints. Number five, is continuous learning and development. And dedicate yourself to becoming better and better at what you do. It must be a part of your life. Let's breathe in, breathe out, and learn new things. Self-made millionaire, a self-made billionaire, spend 60 to 90 minutes every day studying their field. We need new material. Warren Buffett was just relegated from number three to number four richest man in the world, and Warren Buffett reads 500 pages a day. Warren Buffett reads five to eight hours a day. Warren Buffett reads eight hours, seven days a week. He reads all the time. And he and his partners all say the same thing. You've got to read, read, and learn all the time. So, part of your life, don't ever listen to the radio. I say you should never even know if your radio works in your car because you never listen to it. The CDs that are available to help you become better are unbelievable. You can download them with Audible and put them onto your iPhone. You can listen to them in every part of your life and one idea can make you rich. So just keep flooding your mind with new ideas. Number six is commitment. And we know this because you talked about it a lot. Commitment is really important. There's no success without commitment, whether you're putting your whole heart into what you're doing and putting your whole heart into what you're doing for a long time. But if you do, there's no limit on what you can accomplish. You get up in the morning and you make a decision that might, gee, I am going to succeed in this business, no matter how long it takes, no matter how many hours a day. And number seven is courage. And courage, Winston Churchill said, courage is rightly considered the foremost of the virtues, for upon it all others depend. And courage, what you have, is two parts. The first part of courage is the courage to begin, to launch, to take a chance, to face failure and rejection, to try something with a very great possibility that you will fail and you'll feel embarrassed and your self-esteem will go down, and so on. But the second part of courage is persistence. It's the power to keep going and keep pushing yourself and driving yourself. I had a transformation many years ago, which I will share with you. A woman who I was going out with before I was married asked me, Brian, what is your best quality? And I thought about that, and I think I said, I think my best quality is that I never give up. That's your best quality, she said. He's a very insightful woman. I still remember, very intelligent. Your best quality is, I never give up. So I've spoken to audiences like you, and I have found that it's true. I never give up, and my children never give up. It is not in our vocabulary. We never think, we'll try something different, we'll try something new. We'll take the losses and so on, but we'll never give up. So, how do you develop this unshakable quality of persistence, which will guarantee your success in life? Nothing could stop you if you don't quit. If you don't quit, then the only alternative is you must succeed. And eventually, you must succeed greatly. Well, the great rule, you become what you think about, but you become what you say to yourself. So, what you do is you say to yourself these magic words. You say, I never give up. Say it. I never give up. I like myself and never give up. Just repeat that over and over and repeat it to your kids. I love you and you never give up. Repeat it to your downlines, repeat it to your friends, make it something people say. Well, I don't know a lot about him or her, but I know one thing is he or she never gives up. They will not stop. They will keep coming at you like a bulldog. They will never give up. If you never give up, my promise to you, my guarantee to you, is that you are going to be an enormous success in the months and years ahead. And I hope you are. Thank you very much. There are two fundamental worldviews each positioned at opposite ends of the spectrum. The first worldview is benevolent. 
Individuals who embrace this perspective hold a positive mental attitude toward themselves and their lives. They believe in their ability to make a positive contribution to the world. Individuals with a benevolent worldview are the movers, the ones who strive to accomplish substantial things in their lives, and individuals with a benevolent worldview are the movers and shakers, the ones who actively shape and influence events. Conversely, those with a malevolent worldview harbor eight negative mental attitudes. They initially harbor a negative mental attitude towards themselves, often experiencing anger and low self-esteem. A malevolent worldview tends to externalize blame and criticism onto others or external factors. Consequently, individuals with a malevolent worldview frequently find themselves in opposition or conflict with those who hold a benevolent worldview. It's crucial to recognize that the most significant productive and creative individuals typically embrace a benevolent and constructive worldview. Driving towards such a perspective should be our goal. The key to effective living is not in attempting to fix or correct external circumstances or people, but rather in perceiving them accurately. The principle is grounded in understanding ourselves and our own perspectives. It's not the external world that consumes our attention, but rather our interpretation of it. For the average person, thinking is a reflexive process. Events occur, and we react in thought. Life becomes a continuous response to external stimuli, shaping our emotions and perceptions. However, experiences themselves don't generate thoughts. Rather, it's our attitudes, feelings, and habitual thought patterns that dictate our mental reactions. Consider a situation where someone provokes anger in you. It's not the person's actions that directly cause your anger, but rather your own predisposition towards anger. This illustrates our power to control the thoughts that dominate our minds. The first step in mastering this process, what we call the art of thinking, is recognizing that regardless of external circumstances, we always have the power to choose our thoughts. We can opt for positivity and creativity even in challenging situations. While external factors may affect us, ultimately, our responses are within our control. This realization empowers us to navigate through difficult circumstances with consistency and resilience. Viktor Frankl observed that our freedom lies in our ability to choose our response to stimuli. By exercising control over our thoughts and responses, we gradually shape our reality and influence the world around us. It's crucial not to let external factors beyond our control overshadow the things we can influence. While we may encounter hurtful actions from others, it's our chosen reactions to these actions that truly impact us. Imagine our concerns as two circles. The larger outer circle represents the things we're concerned about, while the smaller inner circle comprises the concerns we have influence over. Proactive individuals focus their efforts on the inner circle, where they can make a tangible difference, rather than expending energy on external worries. By prioritizing our inner circle, we expand our sphere of influence and foster a positive impact on our lives and the world around us. The energy within the inner circle is positive, empowering individuals to master their minds, rather than succumb to external influences. Taking control of our minds is no easy feat. Transitioning from reflexive thinking to creative thinking demands discipline, willpower and commitment, especially considering our long-standing habits. However, it's an achievable goal. This shift is pivotal for fostering a positive life and cultivating a mindset of optimism. Optimism emerges as the most crucial quality for predicting success and happiness in life. Studies reveal that successful individuals possess exceptionally high levels of optimism, remaining positive despite encountering numerous challenges. Their optimism propels them to try new things persistently, driven by an unwavering belief in their eventual success. Optimists exhibit distinct orientations towards the future constantly envisioning possibilities and idealizing various aspects of life. They prioritize great health, aiming for physical well-being and high energy levels. Additionally, they aspire to cultivate loving relationships, seeking happiness and fulfillment in their interactions with family, friends, and colleagues. By nurturing these optimistic orientations, individuals pave the way for a brighter, more fulfilling future. The third essential aspect that we all desire is to engage in meaningful work and excel at it. It's crucial for us to perform our tasks effectively because research has shown that our level of self-esteem greatly influences our optimism. Individuals with high self-esteem tend to set ambitious goals for themselves. The starting point for achieving these dreams is to visualize an ideal future. Imagine your life is perfect in five years, 
with ideal health, family, work, and financial stability. Clarity is paramount in achieving success. You cannot hit a target that you cannot see. Therefore, it's essential to be absolutely clear about your objectives. If you had the power to achieve anything, what three wishes would you have? Health, happiness, financial independence. If you can dream it, articulate it, and write it down, then you can achieve it. Seek guidance from those who have accomplished what you aspire to. Set clear, written goals for yourself and revisit them regularly. Writing down your goals takes just a few minutes but can yield incredible results. People often find that many of their goals are accomplished within a year, leading to transformative changes in their lives. If all you'll do from this day forward is to write down 10 goals, and then instead of stashing them away for a year, simply review them regularly, you'll be amazed at the results. Writing down a goal actually programs it into your subconscious mind. Even if your conscious mind doesn't recall the list, your subconscious mind retains it. I've shared this exercise worldwide, and I've never had anyone say it didn't work. The feedback is consistently positive. People find the results to be incredible and life-changing. Now the third orientation is the excellence orientation. To achieve something you've never accomplished before, you must develop skills you've never had before. I learned that everyone in the top 10% started in the bottom 10%. Everyone who is doing well now was once doing poorly. Everyone at the front of the buffet line of life was once at the back. If you weren't in your field initially, you can get there through determination. Those who have no apparent advantages succeed because they refuse to quit. This revelation changed my life at 24. If you make a decision to reach the top 10% and stick with it, you will get there. The only reason people don't reach the top 10% is that they don't decide to, or if they decide, they don't start, or they quit. Optimists believe they can be in the top 10%, and they persist without quitting. Luck is self-made. It's about deciding where you're going and getting on the road. To reach the top 10%, we must become exceptionally skilled in our field. There are no shortcuts. We must put in the work, make a clear decision, set goals to achieve the ideal future, and determine the necessary skills. Now the fourth orientation is growth orientation. It's crucial for future success. First, read regularly. Reading is to the mind as exercise is to the body. Aim for 30 to 60 minutes of reading five days a week. Second, attend seminars whenever possible. Investing in yourself pays dividends in confidence, determination, and competence. The more you invest in yourself, the more you believe in yourself.